I'm Anna O'Donnell and I'm here at the walls of Athenry Castle and today I'm going to make some butter and tell you a bit about the history of butter. So in order to make butter you have to start with cream. So here's my cream. So earlier I would have milked the cow and let the milk sit and after a while the cream would rise to the top. And this is called a churn. And this churn is a copy of an Irish churn from around 1800. But the history of butter goes back a very long way. Butter is a, a very simple thing to make. What you're doing is a bit of chemistry. And I'm going to agitate the cream by turning this up and down until the fat molecules bind together and the liquid molecules separate. And so the liquid molecules are butter milk and that's a wonderful ingredient to add with um, flour and, and salt and soda and make yourself a lovely soda bread. And so this will take about 20 minutes. And in, um, in Irish homes, it was very bad luck if you came into the house to not have a churn at the butter. And so everyone would either crank the wooden crank on the churn or they would turn the churn up and down. And if you didn't do that, you'd be taking the luck from the butter. Butter was incredibly important. In Galway, they would have had a huge butter trade. They had butter roads made in order to get the butter to the ports. Um, it was just such a significant part of the economy. And it was also, in medieval times, it was one of the most important part of the diet. It was called the white meat or the white diet. And that was dairy food. Um, because if you wanted to eat a steak, you'd kill the cow and you'd eat once. But if you wanted to eat all year round, you'd milk the cow. In Ireland, we have something very, very unusual. They found in the bogs something called bog butter. And that goes back to 400 BC and often put in wooden kind of containers. And they just dug them up out of the bog and nobody knows for certain why they were in the bog. They could be in the bog, one, because the bog has good refrigeration and it would keep the butter. Number two, they could be in the bog because it was a valuable product and they were trying to keep it safe from the Viking marauders or anyone else that might want to steal it. Or number three, it could have been uh, indeed an offering to the gods because as we look through the history of butter, it's often associated with something the gods, not unlike ourselves, really like. <laughs> Oop! Aha! Okay. Now, we have butter. So in here is the lovely butter. Now there's not a lot. I only turned about a, a half a liter. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse the butter. I've just brought a bowl out and some fresh spring water. And first what I want to do is pour off the buttermilk because um, it, it's wonderful. It works with the alkaline of the baking soda. It cause, it's an acidic thing and it causes it to rise wonderfully. So here is my magical handful of butter. And what's in there now is there's still, there's still some buttermilk in there. And we all know that if you leave milk out, it'll sour. So the reason for washing it is to get the um, buttermilk out of it so that you're left with only the fat or the butter itself. And I'm just gonna keep pouring and, and working fresh water through it because now this will be preserved for a long time, which is fantastic. So that water is looking not quite as milky getting a little clearer. So that was the great thing about butter is you could have it for weeks, months. And it was also a, a, a way of, um, like a woman to make a bit of extra money in the household. She could take this into a shop and trade it for some material to make a new apron. She could help kind of support the family a bit. She could buy some um, pins or needles or flour or whatever she might need. So this was actually a form of currency. We can boil some potatoes and mash them and have some fresh butter on them and that'll be absolutely delicious. And that's um, butter made here by Athenry Castle.